How many victims? Four. How were they soliciting them? Epstein just had, he would get girls and pay them like $200 to get other girls. The mainstream media has done such a disservice to these girls because it has sanitized that trafficking network. I mean, those girls were younger than 14, definitely. I mean, and some of these guys are unbelievably powerful. You would know their names. And that's what they like to do. Do you know the names? Some of them, yeah. Are they in the black book? Yes. Who are they? Happy New Year. We have so much going on in the new year and so much going on in today's show. This is the Sean Bowles Show, and I'm Sean Bowles. We're going to take a deeper dive into the Epstein info that we have. We're going to do a part one and a part two right here on the show. And I don't know if you know this, but the black book is being released this month. Let's talk about what everyone will do with this list of 170 plus people who are going to be exposed. We're also going to talk about the controversial Christian ally, Russell Brand. He's been a champion of Christian-like values for a while, but not necessarily as a born-again believer. Ever since he had a true detox of a life that was pretty crazy, we're going to talk about it. And he has millions of people following him on a quest of enlightenment, but some of his past uh, is coming back to haunt him. And possibly some of these things are even accusing him, and they could be true, they could not be true. We're not sure, but we're going to talk about it. Let's talk about it as he has a newfound pursuit of reading C.S. Lewis in the last couple of months, and also the Bible. Then I have a word for 2024. God's setting us up in 2024. It's going to be a hard year if you're not listening to God, but if you are, man, God's going to bring you into divine alignment for your future. All of this and more up next, but I want to tell you about our sponsor of today's video. It's Nutramedics. Nutramedics has products and supplements that are really going to help you survive in your 2024. And if you need a health boost for sleeping, vitamins, immune system, or anything else, you want to try them out. And if you try them today, you're going to get 20% off by entering my code, BOLS, B-O-L-Z, to try them off. Now, they have products that are going to help you in your health and fitness journey. I know many of us make those resolutions, then we don't follow them out. But if when you get the product, when you invest in the gym, when you go after it, like Shree and I are doing, we've been doing it for a couple months now, just saying, let's go for our health journey. Let's be the healthiest we can in our 40s, we've, uh, you know, that we possibly could. It's really making a difference to take supplements and Nutramedics has been there for us. So I hope they'll be there for you as well. Well, let's start out with this first story. Russell Brand's been such a polarizing figure and starting out with his raunchy comedy, which produced a sex, drug and rock and roll kind of lifestyle, all the way into his detox, which he had a conservative conversion to his conservative values and his advocacy for truth in areas like vaccinations, politics, and public figures that are, you know, up to pretty shady things that he's not afraid to go there. He's become an important voice in a conversation that exposes a lot of narratives and a lot of issues that are sometimes even insidious. Many people believe it's why the women are coming forward accusing him right now that possibly they could be paid to do so, or there's people who are trying to attack him and they're using some things from his past and possibilities of he said, she said to do that. And one of the hardest parts about this, you know, this is one of those situations that happened in Russell Brand's life is that I've talked to women in our church. Many of you know, I have a church in Los Angeles that I started, I created and founded with some of my best friends who now are the pastors of it. And during a lot of the hashtag me too movement, when that was coming out about Weinstein and others, I asked the average actresses in our church to have you ever been um, you know, uh, sexually harassed by somebody or out potentially sexually harassed or hit on by a producer, a director, a showrunner, these kinds of people. And all of them you, universally that I talked to, I'm not saying I talked to every woman in Hollywood, but I talked to ones in our church. All of them, especially the more successful ones, had been harassed or potentially there was potential for harassment and some of them knew how to put up good boundaries or understood the boundary lines. And sometimes there isn't boundary lines because harassment can happen where it takes away boundaries and it, it puts you in a power place of control. And so it's hard because Russell Brand was in a very powerful position and he had an addiction to two major areas that a lot of these guys who've been exposed in the Hollywood industry for being the Me Too guys, they did this. And so it's really hard when that narrative's out there and we're watching women actually finally get protected for the first time in the entertainment industry's history. And it's only about a 10 year old protection. And this is before that period of time. Did he do something? And he's claiming he did not do that. I want to give his response just because I think it's fair to put on the table here, his response. Last night, Russell Brand released this statement on social media. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being. Yeah, he was too transparent. He would talk about this because this is part of his stick. I mean, he would talk about all the women and the relationships that he was in. And, uh, 
And this didn't come out then. It, it wasn't something that came out during that time by any other women. And there was, he had said in another interview that he had some pretty crazy sexual experiences with women that would be more considered something that could be, because there was lots of things involved. I'm not going to go into it. That could be considered more in line with this. And he was, you know, this is a person that he had a consensual sexual relationship with that he doesn't even barely remember. And so that's a very interesting point. Being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question, is there another agenda at play? What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narrative that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Yeah, so he's feeling attacked and he feels like he's been, um, you know, completely forthright or transparent. The hard part about being a figure publicly, whether you're someone like a pastor or you're a ministry media person like I am, or you're somebody who's in the mainstream world and, you know, as a news anchor, or you're somebody who's like Russell, who's been an entertainer turned into social commentator, you're going to be attacked and people are going to accuse you. And a lot of these things will be, he said, she said, there's no actual proof. It's the person's word against your word. We saw this with Woody Allen and his daughter, his adopted daughter. Uh, with Mia Farrell, you know, like she's uh, accused him of so many things and it never got completely tried because there wasn't, uh, there was evidence early on, but that evidence wasn't admiss admissible years later when she tried to come back in. And I actually believe her. I actually believe the daughter that she had had this experience with Woody Allen. But again, it's he said, she said, so I'm going with my gut discernment. Can it, was it tried in a court of law and, and found uh, not true? No, but it was tried in a court of law. And they didn't have enough evidence. So with Russell Brand and these women, you watch some of these issues with any of the four, I mean, you see with Trump, people come out against every president in modern history, having supposedly having affairs with them or having abuse by them. And uh, almost every pastor that I know that has a, a reputation, both male and female, has been accused of some sort of sexual misconduct or something. And so these are things that happen. And it's just hard in society. It's hard to discern what it is, especially a he said, she said with no proof. And there, there hasn't been proof given. There's just been my word against your word type situation so far in this whole battle. Um, even the courts uh, are not looking at a lot of what they said was evidence uh, in this particular case as real evidence. And so it's, it's really hard when something happened a long time ago, it's being brought up and it's being brought up at a very strategic time. And that's why Russell feels attacked. Why is it now that he's become a polarized figure in the conservative camp, speaking about issues like Pfizer, speaking against uh, certain political figures, speaking against certain things. And all of a sudden he's being attacked on this level. Why didn't it happen before when he was in a messy life? He's not in a messy life now. So why didn't it happen before? when because there's more at stake now well we have an extra bonus segment about epstein and some of the things that are happening right now because there's just been news reported that a judge is releasing over 150 possibly 170 plus names of the flight logs of people who were on the flights for epstein and all the sadistic evil terrible things that happened in his world and there's a lot to this it's not over yet where well, a lot of people thought when he supposedly committed suicide which we're going to talk about even that today that it was going to be over or just Lane Maxwell was never really treated. She's in jail, but not much has happened to her or through her for the sake of victims or for the sake to basically uh, unshadow the shadowy organization that was behind the scenes, trafficking children, trafficking girls. But let's talk about Epstein for a minute, because the first part of this, I'm going to just lay out the fact that not only was he involved in one of the biggest Ponzi schemes of all time, it was somehow not held financially responsible. I was reading an article by about Stephen Hoffenberg, who was the man who was in charge of the Ponzi scheme that Jeffrey Epstein worked with. And, and Stephen Hoffenberg said Jeffrey Epstein was the most charismatic man who was the most networked back in. This is this goes all the way back to like, let me see, 90, 1980s. So they were in the 1980s, ran the biggest Ponzi scheme of its time. This man, Hoffenberg, went to jail. He's now out of jail. He's in his 70s now. Epstein didn't go to jail at all and raised the majority of the money for this Ponzi scheme. And together, the two men worked on this in such a profound way. Now Hoffenberg just wants to atone for what he did at this stage of life. And he's helping uh, victims who and wants to help testify on their behalf of who Jeffrey Epstein really was because he can't believe that he wasn't held responsible for all these things. And you look at 2006 and 2009, Jeffrey Epstein was a convicted child molester. He was trafficking girls and a convicted child molester. And yet even after that, to the, after 2009, P 
people like Bill Gates and heads of state and senators and congressmen and the Hollywood elite were still going with a convicted child monster that was publicly known to the islands, to these places, and they were doing business deals and things were happening. So this is why this has captured the imaginations of the world right now, because this man was all of a sudden, you know, unalived. And we don't know why, we don't know how, but we know that there's something shady involved with this. And I'm gonna just play this clip right here. I was down in Florida and, and then I started calling, I, I wanted to get victims first. I mean, I, that was my first concern was because I, there was like long lists of victims. And um, so I started calling these victims and then they started telling me about being flown to different places into his island on um, with other girls. How many victims did you talk to? I believe four. How were they soliciting them? Epstein just had, he would get girls and pay them like $200 to get other girls. So, and, and that's exactly how it works with Franklin, where if you bring someone in, they'll pay you money. Okay. So, and, and he just had this huge machine that was funneling girls. I mean, he had all these girls and procurers looking for other girls. How young did the girls go? Okay, so the mainstream media has said 14, but that's not... I don't think that that's true. That's inaccurate. Um, uh, we're talking as young as 11 or 12. And actually, one of the, I believe that one of the victims that litigated against Epstein was 13. The mainstream media has done such a disservice to these girls because it has sanitized that trafficking network. I mean, those girls were younger than 14, definitely. And the viciousness that some of them were subjected to. I, I mean, and some of these guys are unbelievably powerful. You would know their names. And that's what they like to do. Do you know the names? Some of them, yeah. Are they in the black book? Yes. Who are they? Yes. Uh, one of them is a former prime minister. And uh, he, according to one victim, I liked to beat up victims. Where were they flying these girls? Were they, I mean, and Every who would they fly with? These girls were flown everywhere. And they were flown with politicians. How many at a time? Um, it all depends because we don't really know. I mean, we've got passenger manifests, but it's hard to know how honest so where, where all would they fly him to? The Obviously his island. Where else? Some were flown to Los Angeles. It's I've, I've, I've got a bunch of passenger manifests, too. Did he just have houses everywhere? He had houses. Uh, he had a house in uh, Palm Beach. He had a house in New York City. He had the island. And then he had a place in uh, a huge place in New Mexico. And the girl, there is a girl that has come forward in a deposition. And she said that she had been molested by both Bill Richardson and Bruce King. And both of them had been former governors of New Mexico. And actually, Bill Richardson was a Democratic high flyer. He was Bill Clinton's energy czar. And what's really interesting is Epstein had to register as a sex offender everywhere except New Mexico. So obviously, uh, some people very high up in the New Mexico political machinery um, were doing favors for Jeffrey Epstein. And uh, according to one of the victims, she was molested by two former governors of uh, New Mexico. Was there so was everywhere just a all of his properties were involved in this? It wasn't one specific one. No, I mean, Epstein, I think. And he had a place in uh, the UK. He had a place in France. I mean, that was, but th this was his business. How many girls do you estimate were involved in this from from start to finish? Oh, man. You know, it's tough. Like Epstein, I mean, just himself was, as his addiction accelerated, he was like three girls a day. So, um, but then you get in, so, you know, you're looking at Epstein, three girls a day, but then you're looking at an at all these guys that he pandered girls to hundreds hundreds you know and and he was doing and now granted uh like when he probably started in the mid 90s or early 90s he wasn't as full throttle as he was in in the early 2000s but he had a run there of 25 years where he was trafficking girls and just his own personal deviant appetites were three a day so that kind of gives you an idea of the, you know, how massive that trafficking network was. You can watch the rest of the Sean Ryan show in that particular episode to find out more. It's really hard to listen to. I want to give you that. It's a really, it's a really sad reality. But I do want to say 
you know, when it comes to Epstein justice, and I, I feel like a little bit of an activist for Epstein justice, because several years ago, back in 2019, God spoke to me, and many of you saw that I put it out, that Epstein was going to come to justice, and that uh, it, it wouldn't be over after the death. I even said it's not going to be over after this. There's going to be women who come forward. There's going to be many of the victims who will come forward. There's going to be people who are involved with Epstein who will come forward and will reveal information, and that nothing will stay hidden. So the word was nothing will stay hidden. Now we're four years later, and there's people who have asked me about that. What do you think about that word you had about nothing staying hidden? As a matter of fact, I got contacted by a friend who at the time worked for the FBI and said, Sean, if you want to use your platform and say there's going to be girls who come forward, that there will be justice. So get might give Christians or people who believe in God the courage to come forward because if they think there could be justice eventually, if they really believe that in your heart, Sean, say that, even if it's just your small platform, it might just hit one of those girls, one of the girls who was 14 years old or one of the girls who was 17 years old when this happened to them and they want to fight for other victims of injustice. And I think that there's no small thing that the Sound of Freedom movie about human trafficking ring that was taken out came out this year because it puts an empowerment inside of us to say, what if on our watch, in our season, in our generation, this huge trafficking ring that we know is probably still active, it has politicians and world leaders and you know athletes and movie stars are all involved with it. What if in our generation, we see an exposure of this new laws brought in many states, many countries, the islands, we see new laws brought for the protection because there wasn't protection. There wasn't any protection. Human trafficking wasn't really understood in 2006 and 2009 when Epstein was doing this, when he first started doing this. There wasn't a lot of laws for the victims of human trafficking. There wasn't a lot of laws against the perpetrators of human trafficking, especially with underage people. And now there's so many different laws. There's so many advocacy groups. There's so much different treatment for the victims. There's so many protections. And there's going to become more and more as we go. Well, this particular ring, I think that God really cares. I think that not, I know God cares, but I think he really is going to use this as a learning um, vehicle for human trafficking and for bringing justice and for exposing people who shouldn't be in positions of power anymore. There's going to be people who are dismantled because of this. And we're looking at the state of New Mexico and two former governors who one of them changed the law so that Jeffrey Epstein wasn't a sexual offender of minors that he changed the laws for Epstein so that he can commit these acts himself. That's the accusation. So you have two former governors who were on this list who victims came forward to in the Epstein uh, you know, cases. And there's again, there's going to be so many more. And especially once the names are revealed, it's going to empower some of the victims to say, I was the one who was with that. And, and this whole thing is going to have more and more exposure. And again, if God wants to do something here, if God wants to bring justice, if God wants to bring you know, he doesn't just want to smite the enemies. He wants to advocate for people who've been put at risk, who've been damaged, who've been who've been destroyed by the devil, the works of the devil, the works of evil. And he wants to bring uh, redemption and he wants to bring restoration to people. And he's raising up groups. He's raising up counselors. He's raising up therapists and psychologists and people who do deliverance to help people who are victims right now. There's more on this. There's more understood. There's more um, clinical um, psychology. There's more ministries that understand now how to do, you know help deprogram the lifestyle and, and, and to bring therapy to the trauma that comes from this and i have hope and i believe maybe you haven't had hope in a while but the fact that a log that has been suppressed over and over even currently just a couple of weeks ago by the senate was suppressed again by durbin is coming to the forefront by the you know the supreme court of new york and also by the islands this is huge. This is a huge step forward. And I believe that God will have some Epstein justice in our generation that's going to blow you away and blow me away. And there's going to be some um, revealing. It's going to be so ugly. But when you see that knowledge and you see how evil it is, you'll also understand that there is justice, that God does want to bring positional authority to people who can hold that authority, that there's been some people empowered who should have never been empowered. They should have been taken out. They should have been put in jail. And we're going to see some of that. So I hope that you're with me on that. I want to encourage you, if you have some stories that relate to the Epstein justice that I did not put in this, uh, there's so many stories, there's so many different links. If you have any new information, I'd encourage you to put it in the comments below just so we can all crowdsource each other and learn some new things. Also be sensitive if it is something that's uh, give a trigger warning, if it needs a trigger warning, because there's so much really heinous, awful, 
terrible stuff when you do this, but also I want to hear from you. And so this is a time of justice. Maybe this story helps you understand that God will bring justice and that there's going to be layers of justice throughout our lifetime over the Epstein issue and over the victims. And we're praying for the victims and we're praying for people who are victims of other types of injustice when it comes to exploitation this way. Well, it's been a joy to do the show with you, even though it's a really hard topic. I'll see you in the comment section. Now we got some news you need to know. Daddy Yankee tells fans to follow Jesus at final concert at the, as a Latin music superstar and singer retires with a surprise personal conversion and a phrase beloved by Puerto Rican Christians, Christ loves you and Christ is coming. I can't wait to see what happens in the future of his career. Well, according to the U version of the Bible, the most popular verse in 2023 was Isaiah 41, verse 10. Don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you and I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I think it's so great scripture for any time, especially 2024. But I love the version of the Bible. The most popular verse for 2023 was Isaiah 41, verse 10. Don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be discouraged for I am your God. I'll strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. I love that this was the most powerful verse that people were relating to all through 2023, according to their website. And I know it's still a verse for now, so maybe we should pray it today. And if you're hungry to grow and really discern what God's telling you in 2024, I want to encourage you to join our Spiritual Growth Academy. This is an academy. It's for everyday people. It's not like this huge school involvement where you have to like go full time. It's four classes a month and then one accelerator where I get to prophetically disciple you each month. The four classes are in one theme a month. So we have 12 themes throughout the year and we have things like dream interpretation and hearing God's voice. I'm doing a class right now starting in January 9th. And I hope you'll come on the unspoken ways that God speaks to us. In other words, feeling, discerning, knowing, seeing on all the ways that are nonverbal. They're the nonverbal ways. I'm going to encourage you to come to the class because many of you are feelers, you're seers, you're sensors, you're knowers, and you need to like really define and fine tune those gifts and understand those gifts biblically, but also practically. We're going to do some practices together. I call them activations. And uh, over those live classes each week for four weeks, you're going to grow as a human being. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be shocked at the development and the self-understanding you have, and even maybe some misunderstandings that will be cleared up inside of your own identity and how God relates to you and you relate to God, as well as I get to mentor you for a whole 12 months, a whole year. If you join now, we have some special incentives for you. I want to encourage you to join. We have a new year special for you. Go to Spiritual Growth Academy at BowlsMinistries.com. Click on the link to join now, and we're going to have such a great growth experience together. I love how much God is always up to. He's always doing so much in 2024. It's going to get crazy. It's going to get so good, but it's going to get crazy in culture and crazy in politics. But what God does will make his goodness shine so big through you and your life. It's going to be shocking. It's going to cause them all in your community around you to say, how did God get this big through you? And you're going to also be one of the stabilizers and balancers and anchors for a lot of people who don't know how to anchor themselves and a season of turmoil like we're going to experience in 2024. You're going to be part of the turmoil. If you press deeply into Jesus, you're going to be so unshakable in this next season. And it's going to be obvious to the world around you. It might just be how your family turns back to God. It might just be how coworkers get saved because they're going to watch your life. And it doesn't mean you won't experience the emotions. There might be some ups and downs, but it means that you'll know how to rebalance yourself and re-anchor yourself each time. And I'm very encouraged because I think I look at Isaiah 62 or 60 verse one and two, it says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and thick darkness over the people but the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you and nations will come to your light as the next verse. And I think this is so, so important for us to think about because it's a season of darkness, but we're called to arise and shine. What does that look like? It means also to focus on what's above, focus on what God's doing, focus on where God is in culture, who God's raising up, what inventions are coming in our generation? What media is God doing that we can partner with in our generation? What are the projects of transformation in our city? What are areas that have had no solutions that God's bringing solutions to? And God's going to teach you how to see even more what he's doing. Maybe you're already 30 years in the Lord. Maybe you're a brand new Christian. Either way, there's new ways to learn how to see what God's up to because God is going to even be revealing things that it wasn't time for you to see until now. And you're going to look at him and go, oh my gosh, you're so perfect, God. You're so perfect that you're going to use imperfect people to do some pretty amazing things. And you're one of them. You're one of those people. Well, I want to play a clip from when I first started to hear God about 2024. It was back in Rosh Hashanah. 
season, which is in September. And I released a couple videos about this. And I'm going to play a clip from one of the videos that just kind of lays out what I believe God's going to be doing in 2024 to remind you and refresh you and help your just you to get some spiritual anticipation where the Holy Spirit inside of you, part of faith, feels like God's up to something. If you don't have that in your spirit right now, this is a perfect time to get it as it's January 1st, for those of you who are watching this when it's brand new, or it's January 7th when we release it for our Sunday morning full video version. And I want to encourage you to do live with us. So hit that subscribe button, hit that notifications button so we can do these videos every week for you that are going to encourage your spirit and help you to stand even in a day of turmoil. And we're going to be navigating things. You won't always agree with me, but you're going to like the biblical process and the spiritual process I go to, to discern this information will help your discernment to get sharpened. Even if you discern differently from me, as we talk about it this way, it's going to cause something to rise up in you, which is called the spirit of truth. And you're going to learn some things and you're going to learn how to listen to God in ways and really navigate this life in ways maybe that you've never done before. So let's play that clip. So I'm going to show the prophetic significance of Rosh Hashanah for us this year and what God was showing me. Because the first thing I saw a huge door open like the wide open in a dark space huge door wide open not lots of doors not thousands of doors but the door the door we've been waiting for many of us have been waiting for a certain door and it's the main door that god's prepared for you that some of you have been being prepared for decades some of you have been being prepared for years for something that you know is in your future and some of you might even be tired like is this ever going to come but god is opening a door and what i love about this is that uh, Rabbi Jason Sobel, who I'm, I'm privileged to do a, a, a Rosh Hashanah event with every year, he was prophesying over Rosh Hashanah that it would be the year of the open door. Based on the Hebrew letters, and the last letter of the number of this year would mean open door. And just as God has opened door for the church in Philadelphia, saying, see, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. It's God. Thank God. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank God. God's opening a door that you need open. It's going to lead to your greater works unfolding in his divine plan in your life. God's opening a door for you right now. That's the great door I believe you've been waiting for. And so I want to give you a prophecy about this because 2024, I believe is going to be a year of divine enlightenment. You might have felt the reducing, you know, of God. Maybe he's been, you know, reducing and pressing you, squeezing you, shaping you in his hands. Maybe you haven't interpreted it that way. Maybe you haven't seen it as this reduction and maybe the season of shaking as a God thing, maybe it's been very painful, so it's hard to see, but 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation, the old has passed away, behold, the new has come. And some of you have never met God as the potter, but one of his names in the Old Testament is Master Potter, and he molds and he shapes our lives, and he takes areas of your life that are hard and full of sin and works them in a new form that's something that's beyond your imagination that's useful useful to you, useful to the world around you. He takes the best areas of you though, and he even adds better shape to those areas. He can do that for you because he wants to pour through you in his grace and he wants to pour into you, like have you be a vessel that he molds that can hold his prosperity, his blessing, and even transformation power for you, but also for the people around you. There's this theme in the Old Testament about pouring you out to the nations, pouring Israel out to the nations. And I believe that God wants to pour himself into you so he can pour out his plan over the earth through you. And not just over your life, but he wants to pour his plan of the earth out through you. And so there's this been alignment that many of you have been being shaped by the potter and people in our generation are being formed to be so rare in this this form is so suited for every problem that arises in culture. And it's gonna look the opposite of those who aren't in the potter's hands, those who are used to what's being formed before, those who like what's being a vessel in the past, maybe even some people's religious spirit that can't move into the new because they're so stuck in what the form is that they feel is pleasing to God. They haven't resubmitted themselves to be moldable again to God, but God's remolding many of us and like changing what we do and how we do it. And many of you can relate to what I'm saying right now. You're like, oh my gosh, it's so me. I've been so molded. Yep, that's me. And he's been reducing and taking out and causing us to go into deeper levels of repentance, causing us to go to deeper levels of surrender and change. And the path has been very narrow and challenging for many of you guys like us. Sri and I have gone through a very narrow and challenging path to let God form inside of us and in our inner being into the place so that we can really be poured out in the way that he's called us to be in this season. It's different than last season. It's like walking a tightrope. It really is to be obedient to God on this level, to let him lead us in ways we wouldn't go to get a result. That's a result we couldn't have got without him. It is like right, walking a tightrope right now. Many of you can feel that, that there's this alignment that happens though, because you're doing that so much that's happening around you can be confusing. And so listening takes extra effort because there's things that are happening in politics and the economy. There's things that are happening in church circles 
that's so confusing and God's speaking to you. And sometimes it feels the opposite of what practical wisdom would say. God's asking you to do something that could be foolishness to regular wisdom. Wait a second. I think I just, yeah. I just had an idea. God's wisdom sometimes is foolish to the wisest things. And that's really confusing when you're walking through circumstances that don't look like what you see in your spirit. You're looking at your natural and going, but he's asking me to make this choice. This is the wisest choice I can make for my family and the natural for myself and the natural for my career, for where I'm going to go to church, where I'm going to live. Maybe not. But if God's realigning you and he's literally setting you up for your future, he's opening a door for you. You better listen. You better be led by God. With that being your focus, even though there's all these confusing things around you, God's not confusing and his order's not confusing. But sometimes in walking out and holding on to his hand and saying, you can lead me, that can be a really hard process when not everybody understands where you're going, let alone you. You don't know where God's leading you. You just know that it's good. So in 2024, it's going to be the year of God highlighting and putting into place and bringing alignment so that in 2025, 2026, it's going to be a whole new season of time on the earth. And we're going to start to see some really, some of those powerful Christians and powerful positions in history. And it won't just be in church leadership. It won't just be the next Billy Graham's being raised up. It's going to be people who are raised up for such a time as this and industries like maybe AI or industries that may be, you know, entertainment or industries that may be uh, beyond industry but into government politics and other areas. I really believe that. And I really believe some of you are the ones, you're feeling that preparation. You're feeling the reducing of God. You're feeling like he's He's stripping you of things that used to be comfortable and authority. He's transitioning you. Some of you have heard my word about transition or the pivot word of the last year and a half that I've given where God's putting us into position. And there has been some sacrifice or surrender we've had to make to be in alignment with God. Well, this 2024, we're going to start to see people who pivoted, who transitioned. And a lot more people might have to do those pivots and transitions, but we're going to watch some people get set in order, some things get set into place. And I believe that God's going to restore a lot of Christians' confidence in ministry and in church, where maybe there's been shakings over movements, over leaders' fail failures, and over people uh, making some really bad choices with their movements and a lot of control and those kinds of things. And I believe we're going to start seeing a re- stabilization of Christians' faith, even what God's doing in ministries and churches, that there's new things emerging that are going to put people's faith and confidence, bring it back when it comes to organized church. And I feel like there's people, some of you are going to find your first love again when it comes to church. Your first love is Jesus, but your first love when it comes to like the, when you experienced him in a community and you haven't had that sense of wonder and awe and excitement in a local congregation or a local group of believers maybe in over a decade, maybe in over two decades, maybe, you know, for a long time, maybe before the pandemic, and God's going to restore you to a place of relationship, even to a local church, a local Christian community that's going to make you have so much confidence in what God's building in the organized church, not just in what he's doing in believers at large. And I believe we're going to see um, some, some beautiful movement on churches and church movements. And it's going to, again, the word is to restore confidence in people who are strong believers. We already know that, oh, close to 60% of believers, at least in America, don't attend a local church right now. I believe there's a homecoming where God's raising up homes and Christians are going to come and find like, whoa, this is like when I first got saved, or this is when I first really experienced God. I'm experiencing that regularly with this community. And I'm also able to contribute in a real way with the gifts and talents that I have. And I think next year is going to be a really big homecoming for churches and also churches that are raising up that will be like people's first experience in church again, even for those who I've already been saved for a long time or don't have a church. You're going to find yourself. The God's going to set the lonely in families. Again, that's a scripture I love. And I feel like that's a word for the church of 224, 225, that God's setting people who've been lonely when it comes to organized church back in church or people who came out of a church of abuse or culture that wasn't honorable or come up from a place where there's failed ministers or ministries. And God's going to set you in a place of family again that you can trust, that you can have confidence, that he's going to build your confidence in what he's doing in organized church. Well, I have a lot more to say for 2024. I will be unpacking it over the next few months, and I hope it will help you to ground your faith and the goodness of what God's doing. And I, that's why we do these. I'm going to share a prophetic perspective about different things that God's doing in different areas of society and different, uh, different focuses. And I know that this Sean Bull show has been helpful to many of you because you write us all the time. You comment on the videos. 
especially these Sunday morning videos that we release. And so thank you for commenting. If you feel like it's your turn to hear from God for 2024, I want to make sure that you say hashtag my turn and our team will be praying for you. I personally will pray for you that God speaks to you for your 2024. I love our hashtag hashtag my turn because it's your turn for the goodness of God. It's your turn to hear God and it's your turn to see a manifestation of God in your life. Well, we've come to the end of the show. Thanks for watching. I pray your new year is so filled with God's presence and that you get a hunger to really read the Bible. I know many of you are saying, you know, I'm going to make a plan for my new year of what I want to be. New year, new me. I want to encourage you to include Christ in the center of that and really trust he's going to speak to you. And then you're going to discern some things this year that maybe you've never discerned before. I want to thank our sponsor, Nutramatics, where you can enter the Bulls code at checkout for 20% off. Make sure to get the Bulls code in there so you get your 20% off for all of your health needs, especially starting your new year. If you want to be new year, new me, don't just do it spiritually, do it naturally. And let's go on a health journey together too. I'll see you next time.